So we're back in the world of cable containment today and we've got something special in the shape of this IP55 salamander distribution trunking from Legrand. This is on the Meccano of trunking. However, you've picked up a trunking we've seen in a previous video. What you got there, Gordon? Yeah, so I've got the other version of the salamander trunking. It's this IP4X version. We have made a video about this. Put a description either in the eye above my head or in the description below. Um, I'd suggest this is probably a go to trunking for a lot of regular installations because it is incredibly easy to install. It's got some great design features in there. However, we're stepping up a gear in terms of the IP rating today with this IP55 version. Okay, so let's start off by refreshing ourselves what IP55 is going to give us as a protection level. So let's have a look here. So if we look at the first number, the five, that's going to give us protection, Gordon, up against? Yeah, so yeah, sealed against ingress of dust. So the foreign body's been in that case dust. And then if we look at the protection against water or moisture, yeah. we've got jets of water for the other five. So that gives us our IP55. Yeah, and obviously by that, that obviously gives us an indication of where we'd possibly use it. So we're thinking some external or partially external applications, thinking of applications, car parks, rooftops and canopies some rail applications, depots, things like that, where you might be doing some cleaning or dust is a problem. And let's remember, electrical installations have to last usually an incredibly long amount of time. So yeah, dust can build up even in yes, systems like this, where this probably steps in and is more suitable for those applications. And we're going to see how it fits together to keep that IP rating later on in the presentation. You, you touched on a nice couple of bits there, and I know they've had it tested as well with salt water being sprayed at it for a considerable amount of time. Do you remember how long that was yeah, for? Well, yeah, 672 hours to be precise. Yeah, it was. Um, so yeah, so this looks like, yeah, galvanised. You know, just like this system here. But it feels different to me. It's yeah, so it's not just, it's not just galvanised. It's not just galvanised. This is, yeah, got a clear powder coating on top right. of it. So okay. I think powder coating is normally associated with paint. Yeah. But this is a clear finish and you can tell it when you feel it. Yeah, it, it, it has that sort of funny feel. Let's have a closer look then because there's some other nice bits that make it easier for electricians to install. So let's have a look at those then. Shall we yeah. start off by looking at the fixings in the lid? Okay, so well the lid and where it fixes to, that's probably the thing. So you've got these flange to uh, fix to. Normally on the trunking that's turned in over. Yeah. On this it's turned out over for two reasons. So it gives us incredible structural stability. So you know, that, is, that is pretty robust. Yeah. And then obviously when it looks at our gasket to get that IP55 ceiling. That's neoprene, isn't it? Yeah, it's a neoprene gasket. So that's going to mate against that surface. The inserts there for, to fix the lid onto are already held in place. They're strongly held in place, so you're not going to... Uh, yeah, can I just have a look at those? So if we turn that over, they're already... Yeah, they're already... What would you suggest they're called? Yeah, so they're captive bushes. And obviously our screws that come with the system are just straight into there. So there's no need for any uh, threading or looking for... Uh, yeah, nuts to uh, to fasten them to. Okay, so yeah, I like that. So pre-punched holes in the lid. We've already got these captive sections here that we can actually screw down into in order to get that IP55 rating. So that, that's 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 fantastic. Shall we see how I put bits together now in order that we can maintain that IP rate and then come back and look at the accessories closer? Yeah, because there again, there's some subtle differences between the the regular trunking system and this higher IP rating. So let's look at the joining process. It wouldn't matter if we were joining two lengths together, or in this case, we're joining to a 90 degree. The process is exactly the same. What have I got here then, Gordon? Yeah, so we've got a Torx 25 security bit there. So that's got the raised insert in the middle of the screw head. So you can't use a screwdriver if you, if you were trying to remove it uh, with that. Yeah, it makes it tamper proof, doesn't it really? So here we go. Uh, we've got our fixings here. There's gonna be six now I'm gonna have to come up with. And I've got some bolts in the packet that are 10 mil long for this. So here they are, so they're going to go in there and then the other ones are for the lid that we'll come to later on. Yeah, so it's the same screws across the whole system, so it's only one, uh, one style of screwdriver bit you need for that. Absolutely, so we go in here and you can see a nice tight feel. What is that material it's made it's of again? It's a neoprene gasket. Yeah it is, um, I'm maintaining that IP55 rating. So I've got that into position and now I'm going to just put those bolts back in place. I have to tighten them up at the end. I'm not going to do it for this demonstration, but what's the torque setting they recommend for this? Yeah, so two Newton meters across the, uh, again, across all these screw heads, just to uh, uh, get the gasket to the right, uh, right level of uh, tightness to obviously keep moisture and dust out. Yeah, so look at this, just slide it into position. Okay, so I'm quite satisfying about doing that and then just repeat the process by inserting the bolts. Once I've got all of those in, we'll approach the earth continuity strap that lays in the center 
There it is. And that's going to use again the 10 mil um, bolts that we've seen previously. Just pop them through the back, making sure that we get those nice and tight as well. So pop those in and then we'll be looking at the, the lids next. So in they go, like so. Just make sure we're nice and tight. Again, it's going to be tightened at the end using a torque screwdriver, as you quite rightly said, up to two newton meters of torque. Yeah, people can, yeah you can over tighten gaskets, and that's when you yeah. can get into yeah, problems. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, yeah. Lid's gone on, and again, now I'm going to pop on the 90 degree section. Now, that's not acceptable, is it? No, because then you need to put the, uh, again, the cover strip over the top of the joint. Yeah, a couple of lid goes on. Yes. This is a, a little bit longer now. These are 16 mil in it, order that we go through both. Yes, yeah, so it's got to go through the lid and the coupler itself and into the body of the trunk. Yeah. And there's four of those to go down. Obviously, we replace all of them in order to get the IP55 returned to this salamander trunk in. Next, we're going to have a look at actually inserting a hole for an accessory into it now, Gordon. Yeah, so we're going to punch out what's M25 hole here. Now I'm going for a 20 this time, 20. so, so okay. I've used a step drill to get me down to 12 mil, and then I've decided to use a punch rather than a standard hole saw. It gives a lot cleaner edge, and why is that so important when you're maintaining IP ratings? Yes, obviously the weakest part of the system is often yeah, the cable entries, uh, gland entries, things like that. So yeah, again, so nice clean holes uh, for any uh, yeah, cable glands, other conduit entries. Yeah, yeah. So, and also I haven't got to get in then and deburr it. This will give me a nice smooth finish as well by using the punch. So I think I've won on both levels there. And we've just got this new tool that you like using. I, I do, yes, okay, you would bring that up. Yeah, I do like using it, look at that. Super smooth, that's the, the hole done. Okay, I can just undo my accessory if I needed to, but that's it, finished. So hello to some of the assembly, but can we take a little closer look at some of the accessories we've actually got down here? We've only got a few, haven't we? But let's yeah, we've got a few, but there is, yeah, there is an extensive range. So we've got yeah, the angle, uh, 90 degree bend, you, you showed in the, uh, in the, in the uh, demo there, Gary. Yeah. Here's an end cap. So okay, again, just have a look at it. Yeah, spin it round. Yeah, so again, it. that flange goes all the way around. There's the link to put, the, uh, put our earth link in. But it is, it's that coupling between them. You always need one of these accessories that goes around it. Yeah, and that's what I showed. So it, it wouldn't matter what I was linking together, I'm always going to be using these couplers. You're always going to be using one of them, and you're always going to have that cover plate that goes over the top, Yeah. which again needs that slightly longer screws because it's obviously got to go through three layers of metal to get into the uh, into the insert there. Okay, yeah. And then we've got one here, we've got the one that sit maybe on top of a distribution board, haven't we? Yeah, it's got the flange there. coupling as well. But yeah, that, I mean, they're going to do an extensive range Oh, yeah, all the all the bits you'd expect to see in the trunk range, all the various angles. We also do this in two and three compartment oh, uh, right, variants yeah. as well, um, and it comes as standard as two meter length, so a little bit shorter than you'd have in the uh, the regular trunking. And it also comes in sizes. We've got the fifty by fifty here, but it goes all the way up to two hundred and twenty five by two hundred and twenty five as well. Yeah, and that's the internal. Yeah. So obviously that doesn't include <laughs> yeah. the, the flange on the outside as well. So yeah, that's it's it's a nice. Well thought out range. Yeah, it is. Pretty easy to put together. It is, and, and this is where we really would like your thoughts on it. Have you fitted it before? That would help us. So you can give us some, you know, people in the community can then see other applications of where you've installed it. Is there any real tricks and tips you'd like to give the community? Could you leave those in the comments for us below? Or is it something you're thinking about fitting in the future? Again, we'd love to hear from you, and so would Legrand. We love the Salamander range. If you haven't checked out the previous video, I recommend you do so. It's got a lot of great features that make electricians' life easier and we like that at eFix.